Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, featuring today a one versus one on a Langre, yes, indeed, Langres forever, Langre Eternox, a one versus one, and who shall be fighting well in the northern half? We shall be seeing 12 Acer or Racer, as he's also known as, fighting for the Americans, fighting for the 4th Infantry, opposing him shall be. Daniel ID once more fighting for the Wehrmacht and fighting for the 2nd Panzer Division. In fact, let's get right down to it. Not much really here to say, of course. There's the sort of interesting layout of Langre with only one high munitions point, and that's rather around the southern point. Bit of chatting going on there. Barracks up, Wehrmacht quarters up. I mean, this is pretty much standard stuff. Both players are. High ranking chaps, and this is from the WMD Invitational Tournament. So, should be some interesting play we're going to be seeing right here. And also, a quick note I so do seem to have reached 1900 subscribers, or at least, of course, it does seem to be fluctuating a bit with some constantly unsubscribing. I'm not entirely sure why it's that, since this is a lovely channel, or at least I like to think so. But, of course, I'll be getting around to a sort of second episode to. Today or possibly tomorrow, depending on how things actually work out. So then, we are seeing a bit of a spread right here from Razor, whereas we're seeing a bit more direct. In fact, going directly for the victory point for Daniel Ivy. A bit irregular for a high-ranking player to do that. Most sort of high-ranking players tend to ignore the victory points, but in this case, they are apparently of another mind. First team out for Daniel, and that's going to be the Volkskandiers, the Infanterie de Wehrmacht. Posting, of course, Riflemen, jolly good old Riflemen with their Garants and the M1 Carmine, at the squad leader, and moving out. Further spread right there. No discernible ideas what's going on. He looks like he's doing what is called catwalking. Which essentially is sort of where you try to sort of sneak one fellow over to the next point. So while they're done taking it, he can then immediately begin taking the next point. It's a slightly tricky thing, and I'm not quite the fellow to ask on how you actually pull it off. Going straight here for the high munitions point as well. Quite interesting. Some players might go straight for the fuel point first, but no, not for Daniel. He wants munitions, munition. And there we go again. Note the sort of bit there. Already can take it. Right now, moving in here. Those, of course, there could be some slight issues, but this fuel point is going to be secured at least for some time. MG42 out, second unit. More rifle arriving there. Pioneers are getting pushed off. Watch of these folks going to be doing. Wire off this area. Protect it against any on rushers, and there we go. MG42 sending up to cover this big fuel point. Rifle charging at the false Pioneers. False guys need to get back and cover. And they can't fully cover it, so in this case the Riflemen can't get an advantage, and there we go. Actually flanking the Fulton, which is not good for them, already dropping several. They need to get behind here, of course, remember, cover is directional, but does not look like Daniel is reacting, quite unfortunately. His attention, of course, might be elsewhere. Here, pinning down these fields. Pioneers rushing in to hit the Fulton, but it's simply too late. He should have moved those Fulton first before doing anything. Instead, he lost several, and the other chaps got pretty wounded. Not ideal. Second false gun team moving up. Rifleman could be going here, and yes, indeed, denying the fuel on both points. More rifleman joining out. Trying to at least salvage what little is left. Setting up for a flank right here. Rifleman going for the strategic point, getting shot. False gun is moving in, doing their best. MP40 gunners assisting the false gun as the rifleman engineers charge in. False gun is. Holding up much reasonably better here. Heavy losses to open all of a sudden, and the engineers get pushed off as well. Thanks to the MP gunners and partner, I imagine. Quick counter attack, and this will probably have to be quickly resecured, otherwise, it's going to be lacking in fuel pretty quickly at the same time. Harassment right here on the flank by a Razor. Jolly good job there, going for the victory point. Signaling that something American is going on there. MG42 pulling up. Mine's going down here at this spot. Nice spot. Not unusual to see that. Usually because I might try to flank over here and hit there. Or of course vice versa. Continuing the wiring job there. 
Going right back for that victory point. Mining going on there by Racer. Good spot to mine. Although it doesn't look like he's mining much else at this moment. Oh, he is going for the munitions point, hoping to deny it to Daniel and the second Panzer Division. Essentially the first Panzer Division to really actually get into conflict with the Americans during Normandy. Not exactly an elite division though, had mostly Panzer IV, some older than the other variants. Looks like these pioneers will be getting a nasty surprise. Apparently not. Did he not finish the mines? What could be going on there? And mines going down there by Daniel, but again, not since I'll you finish that. Rafen opening up in the position there. Full and Pioneers yeah. pulling away. All right position here in the center. Although again, if they get going to get hit in the flank, things could easily turn ugly for Daniel. And it looks like flamethrowers and more Rafen pulling up. They could in fact be going for the eastern flank. Trying to kill that fuel point is going to be ruined by some riflemen. Naughty, naughty riflemen. And again, yes, mine does not go off. I'm not entirely sure if it's fin finished or what. And there we go. Daniel pulling back his positions. Trying to salvage as much. Well, of course, setting up a slightly better position at least. Another MG42 out for him. So two Volkswagen's, two MG42s. And now getting a sniper. A sharp shoot. So the Volkswagen's have been left behind though. Could easily get surrounded. No. Americans are pushing towards here. Hoping to secure that fuel point. Mine there as well. And Rifle are pushing up here in the western half. Pressure on all sides. And sending up for a nasty flank through here. Where of course if they try to retreat they will be running through the Americans. You could even mine here I suppose. Which would really be nasty. And not very friendly. But no, it rather looks like he's being a bit cautious. Once more trying for this munition point, but again, Rifleman proved to be a hazard. And again, Daniel is simply being denied fuel, vital, precious fuel. And of course, Razor is swimming in it, bathing in it, although that might be a bit disgusting. But he is going for the motor pool now. He might even have been able to go for the tank depot if he's so fancy, but no. Sniper opening up on the rifleman. Folks guys wiring off this area to protect against any flanks there. And there we go. The assault moves in. md 4 2s need to pull up. And they do. Rifleman getting suppressed and sniped. And they will be forced to run right through the minefield. Oh dear, they didn't really take any much damage there at all. Only one man down. Kriegberg's on the way for Daniel. He's probably expecting at this very moment an armored car any second. And that's probably going to be happening now. Come on, Razor. There we go. Fultzko's taking losses, although the sniper does join in a bit. Two kills so far. Not really impressive. He's going to need to rank up more. And there we go. Heading from the flank. mg 42s are not in position. Although Sniper's is, as always. And now the mg 42 opens up, forcing them to retreat for all of this. Damage could be done, losses could be incurred. But apparently it doesn't happen, really. Bit of a shame. But he needs to regain some fuel pretty soon, I imagine. And I imagine that unit that's going on, coming up from there, is going to be the Pack 38, the yeah. Panzer Abwehr Kanone, more flamethrowers for the Americans. Volkswagen is reinforcing, others moving about here and there. Could be an idea with some veterans so they can at least get some healing up because these chaps are in a pretty bad condition. Or at least we get a medic pack for them. Looks like we're seeing up a western flank while the armored car is pulling through the center. That could be quite devastating, particularly if we can then also pull off an assault on the eastern half. Folks going to me you're running into trouble as they're trying to take back the fuel from the Americans but they fail and the pioneers get pushed away in the west armor car pushing through the center there's nothing really to stop it there the full screeners are trying to rush in with their panzer faust while the pack is moving out there we go 50 caliber ready at the same time though panzer faust has done some damage right from getting pinned by the MD on the eastern flank and laying down a greyhound mine right behind it of course Daniel is aware of this, of course, he will try to be careful at the same time. It's probably going to prevent him from making a direct retreat, otherwise they might set it off and get completely wrecked. Armor car taking another hit, and now Pack 38. Oh dear, this is not going to end up well for that armor car. 
One more shot, and this, there we go, Amakar is down. He got a bit too bold, and he paid the price. And just getting past that M, that Greyhound 9, but being pretty damn close. Pioneers moving out, false kindness, all that. Might be getting some mines, we were supposed to deal with that. Then, of course, he could proceed to sandwich that armored car wreck for munitions. Weapon supports are going up for races. He's probably home to get a counter sniper. And usually, that's what, how you deal with them by getting another one to basically shoot the other bastard. Freak kill so far. I mean, though, considering the fact that he has one, he's not really getting much use out of his sniper. So, that certainly could be nasty if. Racer is able to kill him pretty quickly. In that case, it's actually going to have been a pretty huge waste of min manpower. There we go, summoning the armored car. MG42 could be pulling up slightly further. Mines have been cleared. Could you Daniel be considering laying down some mines of his own? Don't know, but let's go have a look at him. Fanadiers out. No Panzer Schreck. These false carniers also standing them out. They could consider either laying down sandbags in, holding this position, or at least advancing. False carniers here. Oh, there was. That mine was actually there. False carniers take losses and are quickly pushed back as another assault on the flank by Razor pulls in. But there are grenadiers in the way. No, they're actually getting out of there. Come on, grenadiers. Show yourself as true soldiers as Reich. Or they could have been waiting for support from the sniper. And there we go. Rifleman dead, shot right through the face. That's not going to be an open casket funeral. Half tank is ready. One full scan here being basically used to just man the guns. Rifleman forced retreat for all of this. And the engineer is also pulling away, but still, so far, Racer is holding most of the map. Rifleman getting suppressed by the MD 42 once more on the western flank. In the eastern flank. Positions up here by Rifleman. For a bit of reconnaissance, well, I mean, you can see farther away in the building. Let's just sort of illustrate. I mean, more or less, that's actually how far he can s see due to the building, which is actually not bad. Although, again, some of this is for the rifle, but again, pretty far range when you can actually get into a building. So, I mean, note that you can just basically sometimes just pop into a building just to see uh, what's going on much better. Let's return right here to Daniel. Rifleman hit a mine though, and at the same time range an MG42. Pretty bad luck. Half track moving up. Usually only one battalion in a red in both regiments. Actually, only one battalion for one. Panzer division would have half track. Some Panzer SS Panzer divisions might have had two battalions with half tracks, though that would have been rare. And even fewer might have been fully equipped. That was the Panzerlehr and that was the 21st Panzer Division. Although those were actually French converted half tracks. The further finding here, half track proving to be a bit of a nuisance to these rifle inside there. False guys joining in the fun. And now making a pretty solid push right here in the western flank. Taking as much territory as humanly possible. Well, these five might consider getting out of there. Not really doing too well in the face of that. Schutzen Panzerwagen. And now BARs are up, increasing the firepower of his rifleman quite a bit. And the sniper's, of course, still there. Pani is getting pushed off. And he is securing that munitions point. He actually he runs from this point instead of actually finishing taking it. Assault phase has been reached. And another push right near in the center by Razor. He's not giving up, although he still has to be careful. Of course, will he reveal his sniper? Yes, indeed, he reveals him, in fact, which, of course, could be a bit of a mind game. He's perhaps, you know, just hoping to we sort of force Daniel ID sniper to be more cautious, knowing that he might actually, if he shoots a bit too fast, he might get a bullet through his own face. So in that sense, I mean, some might wait, others might basically just try to play a mind game. And now actually mining this point. And at the same time Daniel going for the Sturm Armory. He might be going for some armored cars. Half track swiftly moving towards west. Albeit with no support, no infantry to really help it. Looks like Razor is lining up for another assault. Interesting enough, there's no tree ascended for him. 
all medic station at the same time no medic banker for Daniel ID does he at least have supplied upgrades? No, not that even. And yes, running into a bit of problems. Ralph Norris moving in, of course. Daniel Adi quickly pulling out. He might be fearing sticky bombs from the Americans. Oh dear, he's going to be running straight for the mine, isn't he? Yes, indeed. Destroyed engine. That half tank is not in good condition. He needs to get those false guns out of there. Half track down. Will the false gunners make it out of there? Will they be lost just as well? No, it looks like they do make it out of there. Good push right here in the east. Driveman and Sniper. Will Daniel Adi be quick enough to pull up a defensive position there? Who knows? And rather looks like the grip of the Americans on this munitions point will be constant. At least so far, Daniel Lee has not had much time to actually get it. Bunker going up, so that's probably a medic bunker. Armored car rhyming at the same time. And there's nothing really from Razor. It's really proved to be a nuisance, that armored car. Which could be to the advantage of Daniel if he's able to really pull off the advantage. We're moving forward rather than getting blasted by the auto cannon. Doesn't help that they're also at the same time getting suppressed by the MD-42. And... Right now getting pushed away by the Pioneer Sniper Combo right there in the west. While in the east, the armor car and the MD-42s end up forcing Razor to abandon that part as well. Whatever shall he do, although he's finally gotten a Trier center up. Let's just speed this part up a bit until we get to the mid game analysis part. Whatever shall be going on. Once more counter attacking these this time with the Trier Center up. Light push here. And Kafkaf Center up for Daniel ID. It's actually time for the mid game analysis counter situation. Well, it's not really looking good for the Americans. They had a strong start, but. Sadly, he's been having a bit of a harder time, really delivering any blows, and he's been bleeding, and... Well, now, Daniel is actually making sort of a return. He's taking territory back, although he's still not really getting his hands on this. Razor might have benefited from more mines, but at least he's done alright. But now he really needs to deliver another blow, and really force... One shot, one kid. Daniel ID back again, otherwise he might soon find himself in larger troubles. <laughs> He could of course consider either getting perhaps some mortar to help with the MGs, perhaps get a tank deep up, get some armor that way, or perhaps get some artillery and basically just begin bombarding the positions of Daniel ID. And of course with Daniel ID there's the possibility for getting some Sturm Geschütz, he could go straight for a Panzer Command, and he's also noted he's not going for a Duckton, so there's also possibilities there. But let's return to the fight. Veterans are on the way for the infantry, about time. A bit of quiet, a bit of movement, anti-tank are now ready, that could actually prove to be a problem. MG getting sniped. Where's the German sniper? He's not really there. Far from charging ahead. Getting suppressed. Pulse on the flank, getting suppressed, and right oh another MG covering the first MG. With infantry backing up all of this, jolly good, Snap, uh, Sniper German moving up, MG though gets cleared out. And looks, oh, artillery, setting off a mine, forcing away one MG, leaning behind, no MGs, in fact, at the front, although the full screens are quick to recover it. Might have been a better idea to fight elsewhere, but there you go. And the battles in the west continue, although he might want us to consider trying to secure that victory point and keep up the pressure there on Daniel. Razor pulling up in the center. Whatever shall he do? Rather getting sniped. Armor car moving up for the flank. And tank are not pointing in that direction. And getting suppressed once more by the M. Gies van Fierzig. 
It looks like he's forgotten about. Oh dear, he's forgotten about those troops. There we go. Might also be sending in some to deal with that victory point. And gotten another sniper. Two snipers. That's really going to keep up the drain on the Germans if Daniel's not too careful. Although they've still yet to really sort of earn in their cost. And a neighbor of an on the way for Daniel. Victory point almost secured by the Americans. Munitions point rendered neutral. German assault going in. MG supporting it all. Pioneers and Fultz Grenadiers. Now looks like they're trying to hit from his side. Medic bunker is up. Might even have put together one infantry team. Oh dear, Fultz is getting scorched as they're hiding in the crater. Even night cover makes it easier for the flame for us to hit and do damage. And the snipers keep up the pressure as well. Did they get one of the American ones? Nope. Both are still there. And let us return to Razor. Just got another artillery barrage prepared. Where shall it be hitting? Where shall it be doing damage? Setting up for another assault here. Fultz is quickly caught up in this and swept away. Sniper continues, hitting a few Americans. Oh, American snipers could be hit by the if he's walking straight into the fight. Oh dear. Razor, that was just unfortunate. And we are seeing artillery, but where? Oh, he got the MG. The MG42 is down. Further fighting right here in the east. Engineers going down to the armor car and the grenadiers. Observation posts report we are losing a sector. Looks like Daniel Eddy is actually getting stormed to us now, the Stoßtruppen. Ready to fight for the Fatherland. And looks like we're seeing a howitzer going up right here for Racer to bombard right into the American lines. Or German lines, not the American lines, although American artillery and air, air power was known to hit their allies and themselves. So it could be quite vital in breaking the German lines if handled properly. And now getting rangers. Fox going to try to secure that central victory point, getting sniped in the process. Where are the stormtroopers? I see 17th SS. There we go, sneaking out on the flank, assault rifles being equipped. Plenty of them, in fact. Four all in all. Push up through the center. He's so far not revealed that he has a howitzer, of course, he could be hoping to perhaps nail that now. Nebelwerfer with some counter battery fire. Oh, he's hoping for something else. And there we go, firing, but where? Into what? And he is indeed firing after the Nebelwerfer. Ow, he gets one of the crewmen. And he gets the Nebelwerfer. Counter battery mission successful. He has just deprived Daniel of his artillery. And that's jolly good. Sticky bombs could be going off on the armor car as well. Rifleman might be close enough. No, looks like the armor car is getting away. Pioneer is moving up, but also quickly moving away once they're realizing this is not safe territory. Because of a general D through the center. What shall Razor do? With a needle of a gun. He also has access to rangers, he could be pulling some in to try and deal with that armored car. That way, mines go off, right from hitting them. And Glenn is pushing up the center, perhaps going straight for the anti-tank gun, although they might be rising into a flamethrower surprise. Not looking great for the Grenadiers though, taking heavy damage, down to two men, low on health. And then Razor rushes all into the MG, which he knows is there because the other rifle retreated right past it. 
quite unfortunate. And he could be getting ranges, but apparently he's not. He's actually floating resources. Not sure why he's doing that. I'll tell you once more. And the MD is quick to get out of there. Amakado takes a hit. Main gun destroyed, almost down. Quite nasty there against Daniel ID. And a push could be pulled off right through the center now. He's actually going for the tank deep enough, but Racer, Rifle Engineer is getting ready. And looks like we are seeing some additional stormtroopers with a mission. Dual Panzer checks, closing up, sticking to the right side of the map. I imagine he might actually be trying to sneak in and knock out that Howard, sir. Slight engagement right here between the false guns and riflemen. Ah, my car moves up as well. Riflemen are suddenly taking a lot of damage. Ooh, Stormtroopers got cloaked in the middle. MG getting snipe grenade on the riflemen. And Storms was clearing out with a bundle grenade, then charging through the assault rifles. And it looks like the other ones might be getting clear, ready to knock out that. And Howitzer and Tank Depot will be seeing a Sherman, will be seeing a tank destroyer Sherman indeed on the way. Going straight for the anti tank gun. And more artillery from the Americans. Firing where? Right there, hoping perhaps someone to catch that MG42. And the anti tank gun gets cleared out. Stormtroopers securing another victory. And there we go, Stormtroopers uncloaking. They have their target. But they're better 22, and the sniper could be getting in. Will Racer, he's a bit too slow. Gets one. Howard's almost down, but there's still enough Stormtroopers to do the damage. He was a bit too slow. Another down. Oh, down to one, and he gets the kill. But I don't think that would be one. They died heroically for the Fatherland, getting the Howard to denying Racer his very vital artillery. Sherman on the way, of course, he could build another one, cancel that, and of course, get another Howard, but he might not feel compelled to do so. But there we go, Sherman ready. Stormtroopers in hiding right here behind enemy lines, perhaps hoping to ambush the sniper, which could work. The Germans are moving in. And the sniper saying he is a rock, he is a stone. The enemy is down to 300 points. Always a pleasure to listen to those small lines from the units and company of heroes. Another pack though out for Daniel. He might be expecting actually Sherman Sherman forts right here. But no artillery to help it. Volkswagen is getting sniped. Rifleman getting suppressed though, quite unfortunately. And Sherman getting hammered without really doing much anyway, so that's a bit unfortunate. And there we go, Stormtrooper springing the ambush. And the sniper is revealed and executed. And thus the Stormtroopers make their retreat, having done their mission. This is all of a sudden not looking too well for Racer. He got ambushed, he got hit. Sherman rushing forwards right into the mess of things, hoping to perhaps take advantage of a chaotic situation. Instead, it's going to be surrounded by several packs and, of course, Panzer Faust, if the false guns feel like it. And this one is still there, able to shoot at this Sherman, gets off a good rear hit. Several rear hits, in fact, Ravner getting suppressed, getting slaughtered. Sherman down, Ravner getting suppressed. Pack cleared out. Raven getting slaughtered. BARs left behind for posterity. Assault grenades. Oh dear, these Raven getting absolutely punished. And more assault grenades going on against these Raven. Doing further damage, stunning. Grenades rushing ahead, trying to secure that BAR to turn it against them. And looks like this is more or less the end for Razor, although he might still be home for an off-map combat group to turn the tide Germans against the crowds. 
Looks like we're seeing an MG bunker up here to protect this victory point. Not a bad idea. Let's just speed this up a bit. Artillery right here, forcing some stormtroopers. Another push here, hoping to secure that victory point quickly. Or strategic point, really. But another wave of Germans stops that. And already these chaps have raked up 10 kills. MG42 sitting up in a further advanced position. Half check getting a sandwich when it's finally possible. Kind of ready as well. Banter. And then we go off map combat group. What are we seeing? Two rifle teams and two anti tank guns. Probably not what he was hoping for to save the day. And there we go. Razor clearly hoping for something else to happen. But he did not get it. Okay, yes, I'm moving forwards. For that. Laying down a bit of barbed wire here to protect this building from being quickly secured. Rather than moving in. Might be an idea to stop laying down barbed wire. Get to cover. More guns moving forwards. Some with BARs. We are losing territory. Stealing an American anti-tank gun from right under their noses. Jolly good. Sniper opening up on the engineers. Continuing up on the east. Riflemen running into some slight problems here with the Grenadiers. And looks like Daniel Light is actually getting the LMG 42. Quite interesting. Let's just speed this up a bit further again. There we go, MG upgrade and Veterans C3 at the same time. And there we go. Firing away at these riflemen. And rushing up the LMG as well. Getting another kill, another kill. In this case, looks like the LMG is actually doing a bit nicely. Grenades as well. Although, again, moving about not good if you want to actually use the LMG. It needs to stand still to fire. Very vital note. And there we go, Grenadier is launching an assault. Both teams, in fact, doing so right into this throng of Americans. Grenades going off everywhere. More kills being raked up. And a full retreat from Razor, more or less, again. Tank Depot did not really get much use, only one call in, and that was about it. One Sherman. Rifleman lost to the Stormtroopers in the vest. Let's just speed this up a bit now, just rushing in the anti tank guns. This is pretty much game over. GG. There we go, GG, game over. And of course, what can we learn from a game like this? I mean, we saw some pretty good work right there from the Wehrmacht. Good use of mines, good use of barbed wire. A bit unfortunate right there, though, with the initial fight. He probably could have done better. Medic bunker, nice choice. Though Razor, he was pretty aggressive in the beginning, sort of trying to hit from all sides. Jolly good, but he might have done better with more mines. And he was a bit too much, you know, a bit, you know, rushing into MG5 with several units. At the same time, he was a bit too happy about climbing up his troops. Not really what works. And also some of his artillery usage was a bit dodgy. He could have considered perhaps getting a mortar as well. Perhaps a bit earlier might have assisted him a bit at least with smoke cover. And I think he he was also a bit too incautious with that armored car. And again a medic station probably would have assisted him and probably also some higher upgrade number two. But there you go. Do hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, why not subscribe and tell your friends. And if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own? This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.